Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with the American Hustler Podcast, Episode 10. Have you given yourself permission to be successful? I know it sounds strange, but we're going to jump into it. But before we do that, I want you to get my latest book. It's an audio book. You can get it instantly. The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. The link is below every YouTube video I have at Glendon007. And understand, if you're going to listen to this podcast, just know that some things may happen. Your thought process may change. You might get pissed off. You might say, fuck Glendon Cameron because I don't want that boy up in my house telling me the truth. So, these things could happen, so you were warned. And with that, let's jump into it. I know it sounds really strange. It even sounds a little crazy. What do you mean, Glendon? Have I given myself permission to succeed? Last few years, I've read a lot of books about psychology, human nature. And one of the biggest reasons that people are not successful is mindset. And the core component of mindset is your belief system. And part of belief is permission. I'll give you an example. I grew up in the South, Southern Baptist. Mount Zion Baptist Church, Mount Caramel Baptist Church would fluctuate between those two organizations, but they were different spots with the same bent, intent, and directives. With that upbringing, I developed certain beliefs that I didn't realize would hamper some of my relationships with women because. It was so recessive. It was so crazy. Give you an example. I thought it was dirty and I was replete with shame if I saw a woman that was naked. I was like, what? I can't look. I can't look. I smite myself. I smite. I mean, seriously, that that was part of the upbringing. I had to give my permission to freely look at the delicious ass and titties and not feel guilty. Because that was part of one of the core tenets that happened growing up in that environment. And I'm not the only one. I've met other people who, who've talked about it. And that's one of the reasons you have like husbands who go out and whore around because they want dirty, kinky, nasty sex. But they haven't given themselves permission to have dirty, nasty, kinky sex with their wife who probably nine times out of 10 would be down with it like pancakes. So the deal is in your mental sandbox, there's certain things you have to give yourself permission to do. Otherwise it's not going to work out. And if it does work out, you're going to fuck it up. You're going to do crazy stuff to mess it up because you haven't given yourself permission to move forward friction free with an endeavor concept mindset or whatever on the elements of success the very nature of success dictates change there is this thing in society keeping it real rappers crack me up with it you go out you create this music you contribute something to the world you make fantastic amounts of money but you want to stay in the hood Just to keep it real? For who? All you're showing people is that you can put together some lyrics, use all types of crazy stuff, talk about drugs, because the thing is, the rap of today is not like the rap that I grew up with. The rap that I grew up with had a lot more meaning. And you're staying in the hood, but you're living in a building that may be $300,000, but you're driving a $400,000 car. You're really teaching some very bad values. If you really, you know, if there's any rappers, I seriously doubt it, but if there's any rappers, and if you're going to stay in the hood, this is what you do. Instead of buying the Bentley, buy the fucking building. 
<laughs> that would have way more impact than you staying in the hood, flossing your Bentley on streets that are littered with trash and people who can't even afford the gas that goes in your car. But that's the thing that I'm talking about permission, because to be successful, you will have to change because success is progression. You cannot stay the same and be successful. You can't do it. So you have to give yourself permission to progress, permission to be different, permission to be loved for the new person or the better person that you're becoming. That's a huge hang up for a lot of people. That is huge. Like many years ago, I discovered that I was a very fucked up individual. And I was really honest with myself. And I said, dude, you really need to facilitate some change here. These things, the outcomes that you're yielding are not the ones you want because your internal dialogue is jacked. Your mental environment is screwed up. There's all kind of trash, litter, viruses, bad stuff is all hanging up in your mental landscape. And when I worked on it and I started curing myself and working on myself, because understand every problem that you have in your life right now started internally. It was not external situations. It wasn't. It was internally. Give you an example. People that went through the concentration camps, many of them were exposed to abject horrors that you can't even imagine. And many of them that lived made it because they created a mental environment that kept them mentally strong. Whereas their body was being beaten, they had all kinds of horrors, they were, they were starved, and they saw their friends die left and right. That is horrible, but because mentally they created it, a different concept, they were able to weather it and move on. Now, with this permission to be successful and to grow, because like I said, it trips people up. You have to understand the change that you need to facilitate is going to be rocky and not because it's change. It's because it is bumping up against all of your beliefs and the lack of permission. Essentially, you're creating a great deal of friction inside of your mind, because as I said before, every problem that you have started internally i know you want to go it was the world it was this it was that no it was internal and as long as you are trying to solve internal problems with external measures you will never be successful with that pursuit it's not going to happen it's just not so to really change your life you've got to start working on that inner world that's quest number one. You can have all the money in the world. You can have people give you money or you can win the lottery. But if your mental environment is jacked up, you are going to do things to mess it up. It is crazy when you really gain some mental maturity, because the thing is, we live in a society where people have expectations of people that are totally out of line with reality. I, one I call ageism. When a person is 30 something or 40 something or 50 something or 60 something or 70 something or 80 something, in our minds, they're supposed to be at a certain place mentally, financially, physically, so on and so forth. None of that is true. None of that is true. You can have a 20 year old that has more emotional fortitude than an 80 year old. It is about choice. It is not about age. It is about perspective. And it's about giving yourself permission to be free to move forward in a certain area. Because one of the things that I learned is I am not grown. I don't ever want to be grown. Grown is I'm done. I don't have to grow anymore. I don't have to improve anymore. I don't have to change. That's a problem. In your life, every day, your body is dying and rebuilding itself. Every day, this thing that you walk around in that houses your heart, your brain, and is the center, the house for your, your spirituality, 
It changes every day because if it didn't, you would die. That's the same thing that's going on mentally for many, many people. They are dead. They look alive. They eat. They go to parties. They get up. They go to work. But mentally, they are dead. A new thought, a new thing has an enter into their cerebral cortex in centuries. It's just not. And they, they have this uneasiness in their belly. And they're just like, life is not good. And maybe they'll drink a little bit. Maybe they'll smoke some trees. You know, something to alleviate that nagging, that crazy, that thing that's in them that's just saying, I'm not where I want to be in life. But I can't put a finger on it. I just can't. But going back to the core of this podcast, permission. First thing that you have to do is figure out what are your limiting beliefs. And for some of you, you may not even think you have limiting beliefs. You may think that, hey, I am free. I don't have any limiting beliefs. Everything's cool. And I guarantee you, if you do the work, you will find out that you have limiting beliefs. I will share some of the ones that I am working on. I am a control freak. And that's problematic in a new economy. It's a huge problem in the new economy because the new economy is about collaboration. So I am having to learn and maintain how to let go and let things happen. It's hard. <laughs> It's real hard and I've had some success and I'm creating more success with that because I have to do it. I have to do it because it's a limiting belief being a control freak. It is a limit. Some of you go, no, no, no. By having total control, I am cool and I protect myself. And no, you actually create more harm because the thing is, when I say a control freak and one of the layers of the control freakiness that I pulled back was. It's got to be my way all the way, every way from the first step to the second step to the complete step. And there are many people that want success, but they want success to come through a certain channel. They want success to show up at 6 a.m. Now, if six, the success does not show up at 6 a.m., but happens to show up at 630, they are going to be pissed. And they may even tell success you know what, success, you were late. I needed your ass here at 6, and it's 6 fucking 30. You know what, I'm going to close the door on you because you did not show up when I needed you, and fuck you, success. And they shut the door on success because success did not come exactly as they had envisioned in their head. I'll give you another example of that. Whenever I was dating before I became more attuned, I used to have this game that I would give to the potential woman I was dating. I said, let's call this game called Definition. And, you know, people like games and it was cool and they would always go, yeah, sure. So I'm, this is what I'm going to do. And my skull, I live in my skull and I say these words and I know what they mean. And in your skull, you say these words and you know what they mean. And we put them on the table, but often... That same word will have totally different meanings based upon our belief systems, how we were raised, and experiences. Take the one love. Guy, I love you. I love fucking you. I love the feeling that you give me when I come. Woman, love. Security, protection. You're devoted. Totally different connotations. And what I learned is I will not tell a woman I love her until I really reach that point of it's not about sex. It's, it's really about this deep spiritual friendship that we have. And even on your worst day, I want you around. That's where I've arrived with that. Now, I don't care about social engineering, about you know, men and women are equal. Men and women are not equal, never were, never will be, because the fact that. We have different terms, men 
and women, the notes from jump that were different. But due to social engineering, there's this big push that we're all the same, same capabilities. Like, no, it's not true. And this is not to diminish women. This is more of a honor to women and honoring their uniqueness versus trying to say you can do everything a man can do and a man can do everything a woman can do. It's not true. I am not trying to push a baby out of my penis. I'm sorry. I'm going to let the women folk have that. And I will salute you and support you in that endeavor. And you are not going to be able to handle some 230 pound guy in the alley. That's my shit. Sorry. But do the social engineering. People are believing in that stuff and some bad outcomes are happening. But with the de game of definition and with the game of talking to people, not so much where you want them to be, but where they are. That's another weakness of mine. I say stuff and I'm like, can't you get it? It's so fucking easy. But I'm not that person. I didn't have their walk. I don't know where they're coming from. I don't I have no clue to the horrors of their life. So I have to, you know, work on that. But the thing is, as I said, you have limiting beliefs. Trust me on that. And they are crippling to downright a nuisance. Crippling at worst, a nuisance at best. So you have to work on that and define these limiting beliefs and start giving yourself permission to change. And that's going to be huge. That's going to be really, really, really big. How does one give their self permission to change? Because it sounds simple in word. But the thing is, luxuries once tasted become necessities. Habits are hard to change. Essentially, anything that's been going on for a long time, even in your mind, even in your intellectual space, you say the change needs to happen. But it's hard. It's hard because the way we're wired as humans, that once we get in the habit, it's hard to break, which is one of the reasons it's best to put in many good habits in your life as possible. But these bad habits, these limiting beliefs have to go. The quickest way to give yourself permission to be successful is to define what is success for you. Everyone has a different concept of success. Sometimes it's an internal concept that I am this fully actualized person and this is my life and this is what I'm going to do. I have a friend who works for the airport. And he is a tremendous success because he wanted to do these things. You know, we were in the military. And he wanted to be an airline mechanic. That's, you know, he did that, went to school. He wanted to get married. He wanted and he got the woman he wanted. The guy had a plan. He never wanted to be rich, per se. That was never in his goal. But he had good money management skills. So he got everything that he wanted. And he's very successful and he's very happy. But he, he's living a life of design, not a life of reaction. So success is all over the map. But the thing is, if you're listening to this podcast and if you came in through the American Hustler YouTube channel or you're clicking in on iTunes, for me, success is freedom. And to get freedom, you need some money. You need as much, well, not as much money as possible. That's untrue. But you need uh, a substantial amount of money to be free in these United States of America unless you have a family member that has this big old plot of land and lets you set up a shack there. I don't have that. But for me, and this is my definition of success, is creating businesses and incomes that provide me options and choice. I'll give you an example of how spoiled. I am spoiled. I was. I had to go out somewhere the other day and I was in traffic. In my life, I normally don't deal with traffic. And then I had to go do something. And I went to the health food store to pick up some herbs. And I, and it was just like, I normally do this stuff Monday through Friday between the hours of 10 and 2. You know, for the last few years, most of my shopping, grocery store, whatnot, has been doing off-peak hours. The only thing I see are old people and soccer moms. So 
was just like, whoa, it's like, what the hell is this? There's lines everywhere. The parking lot's crowded. And I just realized, oh, this you've stepped out of your normal life and you're living the life that everyone else lives. This is the reality for most of the people, you know, they don't get to do their shopping and handling their personal affairs, doing non-peak hours because they are at work. And if they're not at work, they're kind of broke. So either way, they're not out there doing that. And I really thought about that. And I was like, wow, that's that's pretty deep because I do things to remind myself of how fortunate I am, because it's very easy to get to a level and forget. And you just like, yeah, you know, I just got here naturally. And those other people, you know, if they just worked a little harder, they can be here. No, that's not true. It's was gut busting work at one point to get this thing off the ground. But it's very easy to forget because going back to what I said about habits, when you're doing something for a long period of time, it's real easy to get caught up. And I was just sitting there and I was like, okay, I needed this. I needed this because, you know, I started coming down. I was like, all right, you understand that millions of people do this every day and they have to deal with this stuff. Just and a smile came on my face because I was like, yeah, man, you are really, really fortunate because this is just going to happen to you this day. And you're just going to remember not to do this during these peak hours. And I just thought about it and I calmed down. I said, this is going to be information to put out to people because the thing is, When you give yourself permission to be successful, you can create the life that you want, but you must give that permission. And one of the big things is this dissension towards wealth, corporations, and anything that is big and that generates wealth or a lot of income. It's like there's this notion that some type of trickeration is the reason that these corporations or these individuals or these actors or these musicians or all these people who are doing really well financially that somehow they got there due to some type of subterfuge, duplicity, something like that versus maybe they got their ass up every day and worked hard as shit on their dreams until they became reality. This thing of hating successful people, you have to let that go. You will not become a successful person by hating successful people. Give you another example of permission and mindset. Mr. Ramsey, the gentleman that helped those three girls that was trapped in their house. That is crazy. I try not to talk about that stuff because there's so much that goes with that. And there's so much information. There's so many talking heads, but he said something that when he was giving his colorful commentary of what went down, because the thing is, whether you like Mr. Ramsey or not, he put it down and it was the realest interview ever. And he's like, well, you know, some with a pretty little white girl <laughs> runs into the arms of a black man. <laughs> I'm laughing because when he said that, I was like, huh? <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, I was just blown away at that statement because in my world, that is not a typical. That ain't even close to atypical. It was just sitting there like once again. But that's his world. That's where he resides. That's his ecosystem. And it's just, you know, once again, there are a lot of people who are black, who are white, that have not given themselves permission to exchange, fellowship, visit, date, hang out with people of other ethnic backgrounds. I don't believe in the concept of race in terms of, well, there's the black race and there's the white race and there's the Asian race. If you do the studies now, there's a big debate in the scientific community about this. And there's two groups and it's pretty, pretty confrontational because there's a group of scientists that, you know, like me, do not believe in race. And there's another group that does. But the thing is, the way that you look, if you're Asian, black, white, 
is more in a outcome of environment and climate. If you're dark, you are in hot climates. If you're not dark, you're in cold climates. And all these things that, you know, that make us human and, you know, like will give people these features and characteristics came from their family and ancestors being born in a certain climate. That's why you look a certain way. I know it's kind of crazy, but, you know, don't take my word for it. Do the research. So typically when people talk about race and classification, it is usually to separate and to create some bullshit because you know my background if you didn't know i used to work in the lab and i will at one point i was in when i was in school i'm a college dropout i was doing biology and even before that i grew up in the old school of education system where kids actually had to do experiments write book reports and things like that i studied a lot of that stuff you know darwinism evolution and you just it's just fascinating but point is if there was a black race and there was a white race and there was an asian race then if this black dude got with this asian woman and she got pregnant it shouldn't happen because if a hyena has sex with an elephant nothing's gonna happen because the sperm and the egg are gonna go nah 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 boo boo i don't like you you can't come up in here no you've got to go away nothing's gonna happen because they're incompatible and the fact is that any human can mate with any other human means it's the same race. That's my mind. But, you know, back to Mr. Ramsey and what he said, that's just endemic of where he grew up and what he thinks and what he's holding on to. There are a lot of people who I'm not going to classify as racist. I'm going to say more so fearful because racism is totally different from fear. Racism is because you're Asian, black, white, you're this, 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 boom. Now, there's some things that are part of stereotypes that are very true. Like, black guys can get really muscular. A high level of mesomorphs are black. Uh, that's true. I mean, and a lot of Asians are smart. It's true. But the thing is, you go to the back store, a lot of Asians work their ass off. A lot of black guys spend hours in the gym. You know, it's not like they were just born this way there is a genetic component but when you work hard it makes it more evident and that's the whole deal but you know just listening to that charles you know i don't know this guy i like him he's funny as shit but he hasn't really given himself permission to actually enter that world for whatever reason it is and there are people once again i'm gonna say they're not racist they are fearful they haven't given themselves permission to intermingle with other people and for some of them they never ever will they're just not going to do it. It's just like, hey, I was told as a kid to stay away and then I need to stick with my own kind. Now, this is the problem with that. In the new economy, in the new collaborative economy, sticking with your own kind could be financially disastrous. Because if your own kind is not about making money, if your own kind is not about education, exposure, travel, you could be fucked and you don't even know it because you're just waking up and you're like, why does my ass hurt? Because you're getting fucked in your sleep and you don't even know it by your beliefs. And there's a lot of people like that. I have friends like that because, you know, you know, if you listen to my channel, you know, I've dated everything under the sun because I like women. If you're pretty, you can be on the G verse. I don't care. And I was having this conversation with my daughter. And she's like, you know, dad, you're pretty cool. I said, what do you mean? She's like, you've never brought up that I shouldn't date a white guy or I should. She's like, you've never said anything that to me. And I have friends, their parents explicitly forbid them to date someone of another background. And what's really jacked up about that is you could be messing up your kid's life in terms of the person that's most appropriate for them could be someone from another ethnic background. So. You know, it's it's a mess, but this is the thing with that. It's moving forward. I don't care what the people who don't want to be part of each other's lives say. It's happening. Every year, it's more and more happens and more and more happens because in the collaborative, the new digital, the new economy, you can't do that. 
You just can't. If you read the 48 Laws of Power, there's one law. I don't remember the exact law right hand. But to isolate yourself in the castle is dangerous. You must go out and move amongst the people because you're not protected when you're in the castle. You're actually a very easy target because everyone knows, hey, the king is always in the castle. So if we're going to attack, we're just going to bomb the castle because we know his ass is up there. But if the king is out amongst the people, he's in the castle, he's up in the mountain. You great example. And I'm not supporting this guy and I'm not saying he's a hero. I'm just saying he knew that law. OK, I'm going to pause and speak real slow because people may get it twisted. This guy is not a hero. He's an evil human being. But Bin Laden knew this law. That's why it took so long for them to get him because he did not stay in the castle. He was here. He was in the caves. He, was, he knew that law. And understand, these laws don't care if you're a moral or a good person. They don't care. Anyone can use them. So just with this sticking to your one group, you could be missing out on some amazing experiences based on your own fear. You have to give yourself permission to change because that's the biggest thing. It's like, all right, I want to be successful. And this is one of the things that I suggest that you do. Take a sheet of paper. Yes, I'm all about killing trees. Yep, I'm still one of those people. And I use those antiquated things called fountain pens, right? I know it's nuts. Take a piece of paper, pen, and write down all of your beliefs. Every belief. Don't censor yourself and don't look over your shoulder. Make sure you go in the room, lock the door if you have to, and write down all of your beliefs. Like, you know, seriously, if you're like, I don't like black people, write that shit down. If you don't like white people, write that shit down and explore why. And ask yourself five or six serious questions. I don't like white people because of this, 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 this. And then explore those answers. And if those answers are from experiences, you're on to something. And if they're from experiences that you've never experienced, but the experiences of others, you have created beliefs and lack of permissions based on the viewpoints and opinions of others without any self-exploration of your own. That's dangerous. That's very dangerous because you could be limiting yourself based on limitations of others that you just gave them permission to give to you. Because the thing is, I give you an example. When I had my business you know, everyone's like, why are you always hiring those Latinos? They steal, they're, they're this, they're illegals. There was all of this stuff. I had some doubts, but I was in the jam. I knew they were at Home Depot. I needed something done. I went out and I got myself some Latino brothers. Yes, I did. And they did excellent work. They were expedite. They were great. They were awesome. They were so awesome. From that point on, I primarily used Hispanic help to get things done in my business. And if I didn't give myself permission to get past that bullshit, I could have been like paying way more money and getting less service. What kind of sense does that make? To keep a belief going on, I have a friend. And I will not say his name because he listens to the podcast. And you know, I have, like I said, I've dated any type of woman from any ethnic background in my life because I like women. And he's never has. And he he's like, well, what is the difference? And I was like, there's really no difference. It's just experience. And he would say stuff like, well, white women don't look at me. And I was like, actually, I've been with you, and actually, they do. You haven't given yourself permission to actually allow that in your life. So even if it's happening, you are ignoring it. And I pointed it out to him a few times. He's like, oh, damn. It's like, see, it's not them. It's you. Because the thing is, people are people. And even back in the horrific slave days, because some people are like, yeah, we're still in slavery. We're not still in slavery. If you're a black person and you want to be successful, it's a matter of mindset, application, and putting yourself out there. There, there's not, there's, I mean, I don't have to deal with the stuff my grandmother had to deal with, and I don't have to deal with the stuff my mother had to deal with. Is it perfect? No, it's not, but it is better. And if you don't believe that, you're stupid. But essentially, you, you, a lot of people in, are just married to beliefs that are not serving them. So, 
going back to the exercise. Get on the tangent. I do that. But I love myself. Get the piece of paper, write down everything, and just ask yourself some very hard questions. Then ask yourself some more hard questions. Then ask yourself some more hard questions. And when you get to that second and third tier of questions, you're going to get some clarity that you've never had before. And clarity is a beautiful thing because clarity will help you make better decisions for your life. Some of you are going to be in for a serious mind fuck on this exercise because you're going to have to deal with some things that you don't want to deal with, like the relationship with your parents. In our society, I think parents get a bad rap if they were really hard because it's like, you were so hard on me and you did this stuff, you know, like my mother, she did all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, and she was a product of her times. She could be no more. She can be no less. And when you put it in the proper context, I ate every day. I lived in a house, didn't move out of that house until I joined the military. I had stability. I had peace. And really, not too much happened to me as a kid. Compare that and contrast that to what people have to deal with today. I had a great And it's about perspective and it's about looking at the big picture versus sitting in a room and looking at the spot on the floor and ignoring that the rest of the room is beautiful. That's what people do in my YouTube videos. I can have a 30 minute YouTube video. And if I make one mistake, that's about 30 seconds out of 30 minutes. So the other 29 minutes and 30 seconds were irrelevant because I made that one mistake. That is part of our new culture of people like you know give you an example with reviews people like i just can't give it a five star there's nothing that's perfect so i have to give it four stars once again people have not given themselves permission to feel exactly what they want because they're thinking of how someone else may look at the situation if i buy a product on amazon or ebay and it needs five stars damn it it's getting five stars if it needs one star it's getting one star i've given my self perspective permission to fully express myself the way that I want to in the G verse. And that right there is a thing that I am very proud of. That is a big step because one of the hardest things in life is having the courage to be yourself. You have to give yourself permission to be yourself. You know, a lot of times when we talk about permission to be yourself, people immediately go to Well, are you homosexual? Do you need to come out of the closet? And that is just part of the landscape. You have straight people who are so repressed, who are so ready to pop because they refuse to give themselves permission to be a hippie or permission to be an artist or permission to be a singer or permission to be a stay at home mom or permission to be country. Yeah, I said a country. There's some people. They're just country. There is nothing wrong with it, but because they have this thing that, well, you know, if you're from the country, then, you know, you're stupid. I grew up in Alabama. I knew a lot of country people that were smart as shit. Don't let the slow talk and the draw fool you because truth be told, Birmingham was one of the wealthiest cities in the South due to the huge coal industry and the steel manufacturing concern in Inslee. Huge. There was a lot of rich people in Birmingham. But when cheap Japanese steel came in, it just killed the whole thing. Knocked out Birmingham, knocked out Pittsburgh. But the thing is, you you got to give yourself this permission because, like I said, you know, be in country, be who you are. But when you give yourself permission to explore other people, to really look at the truth and be cool with it, your life's going to get better. It's going to get much better. You're going to have richer days. You're not going to walk around going, thank God it's Friday. You're going to be like, thank God it's Monday, Tuesday. Thank God it's Wednesday. Thank God it's Thursday. Thank God. Every day is going to be great because you have mental freedom. And and that's the first step. Once you get mental freedom, then you can get financial freedom. And when you get financial freedom, then you get options. You get a lot of options. 
You get the options to do things that you've never done before. You have the option of if you get married and you want your wife to stay home, she can. You get the option of if you want to give all your money away to a worthy cause, you can. When you are broke, only person you can barely help is yourself. And sometimes you can't even do that. Is that really the thing that you want to give your permission, yourself permission to be broke? Permission to keep it real, permission to keep it stupid, to permission to keep it poverty. That's a mindset of compression. There's only so many resources. There's only so much money. I call bullshit on that. It, there's infinite mental resources. I mean, some right now, there's somebody at home coming up with this ideal and it's going to make them a millionaire in a few years. They've got the ideal. They're getting ready to execute. There is no limits on that. But the limits that exist are in your mind because you haven't given yourself permission to be successful. And I beg of you, I command you, I demand you, I will, I will make fun of you if you don't do that exercise because take an hour and explore your beliefs. Really look at them. And this is for you. You don't have to share it with anyone. If you choose to share it with anyone, that's on you. But really open up your mind Dig in yourself and go, what are these limiting beliefs? You may have something like, well, I must go to college to be successful. And until you go to college, you will not allow yourself to make any money. Because in your mind, you have to go to college to be successful. There's a lot of people that have that hang up and it's killing them. Forget the fact that Bill Gates, Zucker, um, Truett Cathy, Henry Ford. Yeah, I'm going way back. Henry Ford didn't graduate college. I don't think, but if I'm wrong, someone will correct me. But I, I do remember, I don't think, yeah, because actually he was accused of being, yeah, he actually sued someone because they considered him to be dumb. So understand, there's a lot of people that created a fantastic amount of wealth who didn't go to college. Understand, education and a financial education are two different things, totally different. So just something for you to chew on. Do the exercise, work on that. And as always, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side. And be sure to pick up your copy of the audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. You can get it on my YouTube channel. Just go to any video, first link, bam, click on it, takes you to the checkout, and within seconds, you are getting my goodness in your ear. And with that, you have a great day.